Yo, what's up, guys? Teacher Paul up here, and today we are reacting to Christmas in Norway. So, um, I was gonna re react to this video in Christmas, um, you know, during Christmas time. But hey, I was I was quite busy enjoying the holidays, so <laughs> I'm reacting to it now. But I believe that this has also um, it also talks about traditions, food, and culture. So. Hey, I might react to the full video. I might react to just parts of it. I don't know. Let's see how it goes. But if you're from Norway, let me know if this is correct. Okay. I've been gathering some of the information you guys give me. So I might make a video on Norway Christmas. So if you want to check that out, don't forget to subscribe. Okay, let's check this out. This is from the channel. The link is in the description. Valkyr Voyages. I think that's the name of the channel. Let me just double check. Now the channel is Parminder Gill Visuals. Okay, let's take a look. In this mini series, we're going to take an intimate look at Norwegian Christmas traditions, filmed as they happened in 2019. You'll get to see how Norwegians prepare for Christmas and how they celebrate Christmas Eve, Christmas Day and New Year's Eve. Before we begin, I should mention that Norwegians are very reserved and shy about being on camera. So we'll use lots okay. of close-ups and occasionally... He's Swedish. <laughs> that was so funny. However, Wait a second, let me go back. Okay, so he's saying Norwegians are are very shy and then he he points to a swedish person because apparently sweet uh swedes aren't shy to be on camera yeah i got the joke anyways guys happy new year to everyone let's learn a little bit about norway camera so we'll use lots of close-ups and occasionally blur faces however you'll still get a fascinating insight into norwegian culture and you'll have a virtual seat at the table as we feast on christmas food Ankomst til Norge. Ankoms til Norge. Oslo Airport Gardemon. In Norway, the sales tax is 25% on goods and 15% on food. So when returning home, it's common for Norwegians to pick up alcohol and cigarettes at the duty-free shop. Oh, Norway smart. Is an expensive, expensive country. What? 21 pounds for 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 chocolate milk, chocolate, hot chocolate. Di what? Oh my goodness. Are high, which means the wages are high, which means the price of goods and services are high. It's great if you're Norwegian, but not so great if you're from abroad. You can scrape by on 50 pounds a day by staying in a hostel and self-catering, but expect to fork out over 100 pounds a day if you want a hotel room. Oh my goodness. I'm watching 200 pounds a day if you want to eat out at decent places. Goodness, guys. Okay, okay, okay. Wait a second. I was planning on visiting Norway, but now I'm thinking I need to save if I want to go there. Time to go home. That's expensive. The first things you'll notice about Norway are how clean it is and how quiet it is. Norway has a population Lovely. of 5.4 million spread over 365,000 square kilometers, which makes it slightly larger than Germany. Interesting. Some This works out Some people are always old. About 15 people per square kilometer. For reference, England's density is 432 people per square kilometer, which is 28 times higher. Okay. The public transport system is frequent in the cities, but can be infrequent in rural areas. However, they're almost always on time. Over the course of four years, even while staying in a remote village on the west coast, I've never waited more than two minutes for a local bus. Whoa, okay, so it's not too crowded, but you still have um, buses within two minutes that is amazing that is amazing transport you know this actually brings uh, a very cultural and important question um norway not too crowded very clean and very reserved how do you guys see foreigners and expats coming to your country how, what is that feeling like because i know some people feel like hey you know we're we don't want a lot of people to come here because it's going to be crowded and we don't want to, you know, lose our, 
you know, traditions and our core beliefs or something like that, because normally foreigners come with their beliefs. And, you know, that's happened to many countries in Europe um, where, you know, it's been overcrowded by foreigners, well, such as myself. But uh, I have a very strict belief that if I'm going to that country, I need to embrace their culture. I need to learn their language and I need to maintain and keep their traditions alive as well. Right. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments, but be nice. OK. <laughs> Drammen is a river city at the end of a fjord, and yes, Drammen. that's how they decorate Christmas trees here. It has a population of 100,000 people, making it the sixth largest urban area in Norway. Like many European towns, there's a public square surrounded by shops, hotels, restaurants, and leisure facilities. This neo-Gothic church was built in 1871 and faces the town square with an impressive view. This is an Drammen amazing is video, by the way. The Props to the creator. Norway, Horse Brewery, founded in 1834. Other sites to see are Ypsilon Bridge and Spiral. Ypsilon Bridge. Spiral road Ypsilon Bridge means that it's a bridge with the the format of the letter Y. Is that correct? To see are Ypsilon Bridge and Spiral and Toppen, a spiral road tunnel that climbs to the edge of the valley with incredible views over the city. We made our way to my sister-in-law's place, where we would take part in our first pre-Christmas tradition. You le bust. You le bust. Bust. Is that a reindeer? Every Sunday before Christmas, we Is have that a four real Sundays, reindeer? and they're called Advent Sundays. Uh, we light a candle every Sunday. And oh, in Norway as well. Basically, um, counting down to, to Christmas, and we bake. Every day should be a baking day, especially when there are so many goodies. Okay, so and Sweden and Norway have very similar traditions. That's what I'm learning here. I'm so proud of my baby sister because she made loads of things with help of her mother in law. She burned something, but we're going to leave that out. Traditionally, Norwegians will bring their family together and bake seven different items. Seven. As we near Christmas, the 23rd of December is called Lille Julaften. Where Norwegians get. How do you say that? Lille Julaften? Gather and put the finishing touches to their decorations. They also watch an English sketch called Dinner for One that was filmed in the 1960s in Germany. Oh, I should I should watch that. Let me let me take a note of that Dinner for One. Um, by the way, guys, let me know in the comments um, if that number seven is symbolic, or like a lucky seven, because you have seven desserts, right? Dinner for One, 1960. What year was that? I, I want to watch that. 1960. I also watch an English sketch called Dinner for One that was filmed in the 1960s. 1960s. I think I've, I've heard of Dinner for One. It doesn't sound too, too foreign. It sounds familiar. It's unknown in the UK, but practically everybody knows it in Norway. Really? I should watch that. I'll give it a try. <laughs> so you do that every year? Um, just notice the K and the J that makes a sh sound. Is that correct? This is of Norwegian supermarkets are smaller in size and product selection than their British and American counterparts because of the lower population. Country of potatoes. <laughs> And that helps with wastage, I guess. You can cook it, you can fry it, yeah. and then you can make yeah. a mash out of it. Almond. Yeah, almond potatoes. Is it shaped like an almond, I guess? Almond but potatoes. They're the classic potatoes for parties. You'll come across several familiar brands. However, during Christmas, Norwegians lose their collective minds and prefix Yule in front of everything you can imagine. Yule. You'll find Christmas crisps, Christmas cake, Christmas ale, and even Christmas vegetables. What is a Christmas vegetable? <laughs> Alright, we have our own Christmas drink for Christmas and it's called Julebrus. It's Julebrus. Brewery, so we have to have this every Christmas uh, next to our Christmas dinner. Interesting. Okay, this is a Christmas drink in Norway. It's called Tungtegreg. We usually have this with chopped up almond bits in it. It's my favorite dessert in all of Norway. Did you guys do that? For your you last Christmas? Shopping. 
Outside of Oslo, Norwegian towns and cities don't have what we would describe as a high street. So for clothes, groceries and Christmas present shopping, Norwegians flock to the shopping malls. Okay, that's the same in Brazil. Which begs the question, how many shopping malls do you have around? Because like in Brazil, well, let me talk about Sao Paulo, which is the, you know, the, the financial, um, the biggest city in Brazil. There are super, uh, super, super, no, not super, shopping malls. Well, you, you can call them super shopping malls because they're huge, but we have um, shopping centers and shopping malls um, within like a one kilometer radius. I don't know. It's like we have a lot of them. I don't even know how many we do, but there are some places where there's a shopping mall here and then across the road there's another shopping mall there's one location where you have three shopping malls within the same um, square it's incredible the amount of shopping malls according to a 2018 ipsos survey each household will spend 1040 pounds on christmas celebrations what 520 pounds on gifts alone us brits aren't slouches though even though we earn half of what they earn we spent almost as much, £973 in total, with £530 spent on gifts. Oh my goodness, I should check my my <laughs> my spendings. Did I spend that much? I don't know, because I this this last holiday I spent a lot, but I didn't even like I didn't even oh man, come on. The you, Listiana. Or Christmas star is the most popular Christmas plant. It's worth noting that what you're seeing aren't vibrant red flower petals. They're actually leaves. It's also common red for leaves to hang illuminated cardboard Christmas stars in their windows. The only reason you'll notice this is because they don't use net curtains here. I mean, I don't know why I was surprised with red leaves, but... <laughs> Oslo is Norway's capital city, which was founded over a thousand years ago. In Norwegian, it's pronounced... Oslo. Or if you're posh... Oslo. It was Oslo. previously known as Christiania, Oslo. and recently it was nicknamed Tiger City. Oslo is often cited as the fastest growing city in Europe, generating an enormous 25% of Norway's GDP. Its high quality of life is matched by its reputation for regularly ranking as one of the most expensive cities to live in. The metropolitan area of Oslo has a population of just over 1.5 million inhabitants, meaning 27% of the entire population of Norway lives either in or around the city. The population is diverse, 25% of Oslo's population foreign-born and a further 7.8% being from an immigrant background. Okay. In many European capitals, Oslo isn't very representative of Norwegian culture. Okay. It's Christmas, when the city comes alive with dazzling Christmas lights and cozy Christmas markets. Back in the day, or even... So that kind of like answers my question from the beginning. Something like this for transportation. One person sits at the front while the other one is doing the hard work, sliding through, using their leg force to get through the snow and ice. We're also right now exploring the Christmas market here, and there are loads of food stalls here. It's buzzing. People are walking all over each other here. We have it's a kind of like a human sled. And a ice rink. Lots of people falling over, which is a lot of fun. Winterland. Let's go and explore the stalls. Wow, that's beautiful. In fact, let me just say this documentary is very well produced, very professionally made, a lot, very insightful and very educational. I, it's very easy to get by. We've passed 10 minutes of the documentary. I didn't feel a thing. Amazing. Very great, high quality, high value. I love the depth of the field. Oh, the... What do you call them? Wursts? Or is that... Is that a German word? Alfred. Moose kebab. Moose kebab? Oh, wow. 
The Swedish shipping eggs are here. Yeah. Selling yeah. smoking in Norway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so I'm going to try some spitting It's donuts, but dry donuts without the glaze or anything, but it's full of fat. And it's really nice to have this in this cold weather because it's going to heat you from the inside. And don't tell anyone they're actually Swedish. <laughs> they told everyone. Mm, so yummy. Oh my god! <laughs> Bro, <laughs> Did, what? <laughs> okay, that's not a great place to <laughs> to pause. <laughs> what the hell? What does that mean, anyways? Um, anyways, the the fact that he's playing around that that makes it so much of a better experience because you go to the fair, you meet nice people. That guy is so friendly. You know, you have a conversation. They allow you to film. That is such a, a nice Christmas spirit. Julebord. Julebord. Which translates to Christmas table is a Christmas party that's usually organized by companies or organizations. <laughs> According to Oscar and Stalin's website, in 1971 it opened its doors as the first steak restaurant in Drammen and one of the first restaurants to offer pizza. We're here to try traditional Norwegian food and okay, a Scandinavian spirit okay, usually bit. distilled from potatoes and flavored with spices. It's usually 40% alcohol by volume and it's drunk at Christmas because it's believed to aid digestion. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's gonna burn the whole of your inter uh, intestine. That's nice though. Yeah. It works great with like mussels and stuff. Then we have the Amusi, which is like the well. <laughs> it goes up the nose, that oh, yeah. Guess what housewives <laughs> live no, here? That's what it says in the background. You're fine. <laughs> this is the one that uh, I drink at Christmas Eve. Like, steak. No, not steak, but uh, pork belly. Yo, three shots and he's drunk. Oh, God. <laughs> it smells like nail polish remover. Uh, it's made in Norway. It's illegal to make, uh, make it home. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, don't do that. That was the mildest. <laughs> that was the mildest. <laughs> that is the mildest, kindest one. Wait, the aftertaste is good. It it's has licorice bad. flavor. Oh. Yeah, mm -hmm. they use a lot How of is that spices. good? Oh, wow. You know How can you say licorice and good in the same sentence? <laughs> you know, we love our potatoes when we make liquor out of it. Cheers, guys. No, not again. Lutefisk is made by drying Lutefisk. white fish, soaking it in water, curing it in a caustic soda solution, soaking it again in water, and then serving it alongside bacon, peas, and potatoes. I'm really excited because I'm going to try lutefisk for the very first time. <laughs> Most Norwegians are terrified of this item because it's supposed to be... My mom, when she came to Norway for the first time, she had lutefisk and it was a terrible experience for her. She thought, if this is like their Christmas dinner, how will the regular food taste like? This time it's gonna be so exciting to see her reaction. Bon appétit! That is a long fork. Okay, okay. It's okay, but it's better than the last time you had yeah. it. Mm. I think I actually like it a lot. Wow! I mean, that's not a bad thing to like it, right? <laughs> that's so salty. That is super Wait, salty. If I just have the fish myself, so slippery. <laughs> is that kind of like a cod fish from Portugal? It has actually a little bit jelly texture um, to it, but... Because cod so fish, good. they're very sure, salty. Yeah. I could get to wash it down. The Portugal that's kind. Really that's water, not. <laughs> and, and it's basically made that way um you know the, the bacalhau from portugal it's made that way because they they had to export and bring the fish right so they use a lot of salt to conserve it and then it basically came became like a an acquired taste so it's not supposed to be that salty they actually add the salt onto it uh, but it's very delicious if you haven't tried it yet, bakaliao. Talarken is the name given to a plate of traditional Norwegian Christmas food. It usually consists of julepølse med disterkake and <laughs> ribbe. It's, it's the celebration. In I love how they, they add her um, pronunciation. 
Christmas sausage. Beautiful. But to me, it tastes like a regular sausage. <laughs> what makes it regular sausage? It is made from um, in the traditional way, but they have also used a little bit of spices as well. Nice. This one, I think. Like the Just regular hot dogs aren't that dense. Meaty flavors, meaty hot dog. Not hot dog, but sausage. Medistica kid. Get the best of the Thai. Yeah, that's that's done here in the UK as well. Patty, you can feel the texture is grainy, but it's really good. I mean, going back to what he said about the Eula sausage, <laughs> it's like um, you know those Easter eggs. They're at the end of the day, they're just chocolate, right? Um, just a traditional thing, but you can get Easter eggs. Um, it's the same chocolate all year round. It tastes like a sausage, but in a different form, like a meatball Ring. sausage. Yeah. And onto the rib. Oh. If you can hear egg. that, that's the top layer. Oh, pork belly. Oh, cracklings. I love those. <laughs> I love the cracklings. That's really soft. Mm. The top layer is hard, but when I threw it, it just slides off the bone. It is so soft. You okay, so we have reached the halfway point. This is Christmas Eve. And I think we can take a break. And guys, I'll see you in part two. If you want me to continue watching this, I probably will anyways. But if you want me to continue reacting to Norway, let me know in the comments down below if you have a great video you want to share with me. This is an excellent video. So um, I really enjoyed it. The link is in the description. They did a great job. We have reached the halfway point. So part one over. Let's go to part two. Um, it's going to be available soon here on YouTube. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care for now. Bye-bye. See you soon.